very early on there was a thing called the ampere balance which is a, a balance for weighing which has on it one coil um, hung on the balance beam and the other coil fixed to the base and you pass current through both of the coils in series and this generates a force which you oppose with a weight and therefore you can calibrate the current and uh, deduce uh, the unit, the electrical unit, the ampere. And this had existed for about 30 years, uh, but it became, with advance of technology, not accurate enough. So uh, I sort of wondered what could be done about this and found that the chief difficulty with the current balance was that you had to measure the dimensions of these coils. And even then, when you'd done that with the greatest of care, it didn't tell you exactly where the current was flowing in the cross-section of the wire of the coils. So it had problems that direction. And how could this be got around? And it turned out to be very simple, that if you do your weighing part of it, and then you do another part, uh, where you simply move one coil with respect to another, that generates a voltage in the coil. And if you measure the voltage and the speed with which it moves, you then can equate the voltage of the moving times the current in the coil equals the velocity with which you moved it times the weight, the force, which opposed the current. And that is a very exact equation which doesn't depend on friction in the bearings or dimensions of the wires or anything uh, is a very pure uh, situation. So uh, we built one and the other freedom you get is that instead of just coils, one inside the other generating a, a few miserable grams weight of force, you could have a socking great permanent magnet instead of the fixed coil and uh, generate a whole kilogram of force if you wanted so you had a whole lot uh, more things you could measure, uh, bigger things you could measure and uh, therefore you could measure them more accurately and the, the, the bit of luck in this whole idea was that things you had to measure, uh, the voltage and the current was a voltage and a resistance again, and the mass and the acceleration to gravity, all these things now were of such a size you could measure them to a part in a hundred million or so. Uh, it, it isn't, of course, like everything else, without any problems. There are problems of aligning the coil and the magnetic field, which turned out to be a little bit of a problem, which I left for Ian to solve, really. <laughs> this that, is a that, thing to do. That description of the moving coil apparatus took 40 years. It took about three minutes to talk about it. And yes. And 40 years to actually do it. I worked in, 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 uh, on these electrical uh, measurements of the Josephson effect in superconductors and the quantum Hall effect in, uh, in semiconductors. And uh, both these were capable, the, the Joseph in fact was very capable of providing a very accurate voltage standard. And if you can set up a system which has a thin layer of electrons in a two-dimensional plane, and you can do that in semiconductors, silicon, gallium oxide, and graphene, it already has, a, has that in its natural, natural form, then if you can set anything like that, or pass a current through it, and measure a voltage across it in a magnetic field, then it's, it's universal. And if you tried to do them, if you had the facility to do the measurement 10 times, 100 times better, it would still be the same. Quite likely, Quite yes. likely. Of course we then, don't I know. Mean, but, yeah. what, what we're looking for in these comparison experiments is trying to find out if there's any material dependence, you know, uh, which, which would be important for some <coughs> measurements or some uh, experiments. But so far, there's been none. The kilogram is just an artefact, it's a lump of metal, it can be worn away, it can be lost and all these hypothetical things. But 
basing, in this case, mass on Planck's constant. Planck constant is available all over the universe, and as far as we know, it's the same everywhere uh, and forever. And uh, it would be a highly desirable thing to do, if it weren't so difficult. <laughs> it is going ahead quite well now. Yes. That, that sort of, that, pro that process is reaching its conclusion and should be finished in the next sort of four years or so. They will, at the same time as, as fixing the value of the Planck constant, also they'll fix the value of the elementary charge. And that means that the two effects that Tony and Brian have been talking about, they will rejoin the SI because at the moment they're sitting out on a bit of a limb um, because they're not, they're, they're based on values of Planck's constant and the elementary charge that aren't SI ones. And that will bring those into the SI and also, um, we'll, that we'll fix the Boltzmann constant at the same time. And why does it all matter? Well, there's the sort of climbing Everest reason, because it's there, but more compelling, I think, in the world of metrology is that if you attempt these very difficult measurements, uh, you become very skilled at making easier measurements and dis there is a dissemination of knowledge as well as units down to uh, industrial laboratories and, and so on. You have to remember all that, of course. I mean, we were at the apex of this huge chain of measurements going all the way down to the factory floor with all these intermediate checks. And uh, we, we happened, we were at the very top of that uh, apex of measurements. We, you know, so people worked their way up eventually to the measurements we did. In these early days, the, um, the slang term for NPL was the University of Teddington. Right. And it did, in some ways, behave more like a university with freedom to, to do research, so long as it was a reasonable thing to follow, yeah. But it slowly changed over the years, of course. But, but say that, I, in my entire career, no one has really told me what to do, per se. Well, no, they, they, they wouldn't be successful. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm a bit like that too, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> uh. <laughs>